Well, in this video we're going to watch, we have a good treat about the robotic Da Vinci system. We're at a local hospital. Uh, we're going to see uh, a surgical first assist and a Mako rep is going to demonstrate some of the techniques for uh, the Mako robotic system. If you're not sure what the Mako robotic system is, it's made from Stryker. Uh, they use in a lot of orthopedic, total knee cases, total hip cases. Uh, so today we're at a local hospital. There will not be any patient information. I'm not going to let you know what hospital out of privacy. I did get permission to be in this hospital. So this is a treat to be within the OR to work with a surgical first assist and a rep to see the Mako robotic system for the orthopedics. So that being said, let's just jump right into the OR. Thanks. Um, hi everyone. My name is Ashley Delalo. I am a Mako product specialist. So I, uh, basically run the Mako robotic arm during total knee arthroplasties, total knee um, or total hip arthroplasties as well. Um, and I'll kind of be here for the preoperative part when you're going to be sterilizing um, and programming the robot as well as intraoperatively. So if you have any questions about that, um, we're the ones that you're going to be asking. What the robot's doing here is it's running through each series of our yeah, joints. So we have J1, J2, like 3, 4, oh. 5, and 6. Um, really it's quick. basically testing to make sure that it's going to stop properly. So intraoperatively, when we're doing our cuts, there's a haptic system. Um, and if you go outside the haptic, it'll shut off. Um, so this is just ensuring that all the joints are properly calibrated so that they shut off when they need to. This is going to be, uh, we're set up for a right total knee arthroplasty. Um, yep, we do hips, knees, and partials as of right now. Rough. It took like three techs to home it. So right now I'm just doing a range of motion check. Again, just making sure that each joint um, is fully able to move through the full range of motion. There we go. So it passed all the checks there, which means we're good to do our surgery. Um, I do this, yeah, preoperatively, so before the patient's ever in the room, just make sure the robot's good. Um, and then once that happens, we're good to go ahead and uh, start making it sterile. I learned this after I got here, so it is important to, for them to know that stuff like this comes double bagged. So you can reach in and grab the the sterile bag inside the non-sterile bag or if it gets dropped you can open the second bag open the sterile bag um, same thing with the arrays they come double packaged so if one of the packages gets dropped or falls off the table there's a second chance for sterility you can just grab a, a hemostat and pop them out individually um, Draping the robot is a little difficult if doing it by yourself, so typically the rep helps. Once you've got comfortable with it, you can do it by yourself. If you're like very cognizant of sterile technique. That depends on doctor preference. The reps don't typically like us to do that because, no. Because it, it depends on, it depends on, I would say, room size as well as, of course, doctor preference. This one, mm -hmm. if this array gets moved or wiggled or anything after uh, registration yeah. with with that it's the registration is useless mm -hmm. you got to so redo it yeah yeah because we also have to be obviously cognitive of sterile techniques so when we go to take off that three-quarter drape we kind of have to you know be very careful and if it was to pull on those arrays it would loosen them um, however in a room like this where it's so big I can back the robot into a more you know uh, safe area but some of our rooms that are smaller and you know if they're doing a spinal or anything kind of coming close to the robot we do like to drape it not to um, mention just to make pulling sure. a drape off of something after it's been sterilely draped yeah. is kind of a risk for contamination too okay we can go at an angle if that's easier to kind of see what we're doing 
Some hospitals will require you to hood when you're draping or setting up for a total joint. I guess it depends on what their infection rates are. If they start going up, they might change their minds on how we're doing things. <laughs> you can you can edit it out if I miss. <laughs> I have seen that. <laughs> okay. The drape comes after these arrays have shapes that match up with the busy disks. They fit right in, press them down, and then peel them off. Behind the busy disks, you want to look for silver showing. Just give them a little twist and push. Once there's no silver showing, they're good. An important thing with that is when you're pushing down the disc, you want to use a flat palm because if you were to push on the center of the disc with like a finger, you could risk uh, damaging the disc. There's some other arrays that have stems on them. And if you're pushing down on the stem, you could bend the stem and throw off the, the calibration. I feel like this one right now, I just put it down, but some of the silver is still showing. I got to squeeze those down because this, this robot's calibrated down to like point, point zero one. Point zero one of a millimeter. Millimeters count. Yep. So, putting, hanging this plunger down till metal touches metal, using gravity to assist and tightening the screw. The screw is important to look for because it can be loose in the tray sometimes. SPD isn't always putting it on there absolutely perfectly. Same with everything else. There's pictures that match it up. Keep it simple. The blue probe is a sharp probe, it pierces through cartilage, so you do want to be careful with that one. And uh, as you can see in the Visidesk tray, there's one that's kind of angled and then one that's circular. The circular one is going to be your green probe, that's our blunt probe, um, that map it maps on top of cartilage. So it's not sharp. The green one is not sharp. The green is our blunt probe, and then our uh, blue is our sharp probe. And the difference between the probes is with the CT scans. Thank you. The, uh, the green probe is basically the gross measurements, mapping or calibrating the robot to the patient, and the blue probe is the more fine measurements, mm -hmm. taking the CT scan directly to the bone and not just the uh, larger anatomy. Mm -hmm. We have sharps. The uh, saw blade, we have a, a, lar a large saw blade here. The easiest way to do this is to drop it down into that, hold it down with your thumb, and then hand tighten. Always hand tighten because the ratchet mechanism inside here is fragile. Even though it comes with a wrench, we don't like to use the wrench. We also have a separate attachment coming out that you'll see that's exactly the same. Instead of the tightening bolt that you saw, it's going to have a latch attachment, but the same concept of inserting the blade, pushing down on the top, and then using the tightening mechanism. Okay, so now that I have everything set up, I have my screwdriver. Not to be confused on a hip for the checkpoint inserter, because it has a similar safe shape at the end, but it's not used for this. On the drape, it's got keep it simple instructions. Left hand number one, right hand number two. So 
So simple enough. You open it up, open it up, reach inside the middle until you get to where the arm sleeve is visible, keeping it away from your body. Okay. At this point, um, we can assist in draping this. So we always like to ask if you're comfortable. We'll reach through where it's non-sterile. And your biggest thing is just making sure that the outside, the sterile part, doesn't rub up against the robot. And then also guard it, or guiding, there's a little blue tab that uh, Lance has here onto a, what we call our base array. So I'll kind of help you guide it over. And then he'll thread that through. And then help me guide um, everything just kind of correctly onto the robot. Pulling down, tugging, making sure it's fully down in the front as well. The blue things are covers for fenestrations in the drape. Underneath there, it has touched non-sterile areas. So we hold down the drape here, pinch, lift, and immediately discard the non-sterile cover. Mm -hmm. Line up the hole with the mount. To it's important that that plastic ring is fully sat. Because as you can see here, obviously this is sterile field, but just for showing purposes, um, there are screw holes. If this ring were to be set up, um, our registration would be thrown off. Because again, it is very specific in how it's registered. Then we take the handpiece, pass the plug in to the rep. Mm -hmm. Take the handpiece and lay it on the mount. Once it's laid there, we can't lift it off because it's not sterile underneath anymore. Then just do a quick finger tight on the two screws on either side. Then our screwdriver, tighten it down hand tight. On both sides. The mixed hand piece only fits in one way. So if you find that when you're screwing it down, you kind of feel like you're screwing forever and it's not fitting, it just means it's not fully sat properly. And we do the same thing yeah. with our base array. Also has a fenestration in it. There's a little notch or tab that lines up with the notch in here. Sit straight in, give it a forward push and a clockwise twist. Once it's in, just give it a little bit of a steering wheel wiggle to make sure it's fully seated. When attaching that base array, that little notch that he was showing you, it's very important that when you can fully compress the spring before you turn right or you will break off that little notch. So if you find that you're uh, kind of having to apply a lot of force, just kind of back off, reapply the spring and turn it to the right. Now we've, uh, we've draped and we're going to start registration. We'll take the plunger, stick it in, and turn to the lock position, which is opposite of unlock. There is no actual closed lock picture until no red is showing. Red, no red. Okay. I'll go ahead and unlock the robot from the back here, and Lance is going to flip it in towards our base array. Okay. okay, you got your camera over there. Okay. So the importance of the busy discs and the camera having clear view of each other is... Uh, so the importance here is all those visitors, the reason why they need to be fully sat down is because if they're not, it won't register to our camera. Um, our camera basically sees uh, the geographical shape of the disc. Um, it doesn't actually see the robot itself. So what Lance is doing here is he is calibrating the relationship between the arm and this base array. Interoperatively, um, when we're going to do our measurements, if anything were to be shifted or moved, these numbers that we're calibrating now, um, they would be off and we'd have to recalibrate interoperatively. So this is a very important step in the process to make sure that we are doing it correctly. Um, so right now is our registration. So Lance is gonna go, go ahead, press on that trigger and it's gonna auto align him to our ideal position.
It doesn't take a forceful touch to do any of this. Nope. Now that he's in uh, the ideal position, we're going to be drawing a geographical box. This is just a space and area. Again, just kind of showing um, where the arm is in relation to this base array. Uh, it's in a haptic system, so Lance is going to have to apply barely to no pressure. Um, it will not allow him to move in the wrong direction. So uh, if you want to go ahead and show them Lance moving into that first point, he can literally use just his fingers to push it. And again, no force is needed. If he were to try to move in the wrong direction, the robot would physically not let him. So see how it's kind of resisting him, it's not allowing him. So go ahead and move into the proper position. It should be very simple. While you're learning, if you are having a hard time learning this pattern, um, we always like to say, just try to give it a little wiggle. If it doesn't move in one direction, then probably try the other one. So that was our registration. This is now our verification. As you can see in the right-hand corner, possibly, it says 0 0.28 millimeters. Um, that is going to be uh, the distance that we are trying to verify here. So Lance is going to do that by pointing the uh, mix machine straight at the ground, pressing that trigger uh, one time, and then going straight towards the ceiling, making a 120-degree angle. Our robot will automatically go into this patient timeout page. That means that it verified it and that you have done that correctly. The next step in our process would be to go ahead and remove that X machine, and we're going to do um, a verification process of that blue and that green probe um, that we did before. So I'll go ahead, pull up that uh, screen for Lance. The important part here is that all the discs are shown, and we are measuring the probes to make sure that they were damaged during the sterilization process. So on this black X for registration, there's a little indentation or divot. The both probes go inside this and face the camera whenever we're verifying the probes. The blue and the green probe are a little bit different than each other. The green's fairly easy to do. The blue takes a little bit more uh, finesse. Mm -hmm. Typically, you just stick the blue inside and kind of slide it out a little bit of the so as you can see here, there's kind of a red and a green um, area showing up the top, or red and yellow. We want it to be green. Green means that's verified. And again, once it advances to the next page, that means that both of them are fully verified. After that's complete, we put the blade that the doctor prefers onto the handpiece, lock it in place. And if the doctor has a preference of covering the robot with a drape or a sterile gown, then we would do that at this time so that whenever the patient comes in, nobody contaminates what all the hard work you've just done. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing, other thing I would like to mention is um, this cord here. Most doctors like it strapped down one to two points of fixation. That's just so that they're not struggling with it. So Lance will typically uh, bring it around the mix machine like you see here so that it doesn't block any of our arrays intraoperatively. And you need... Um, little slack here, nothing nothing crazy, and just strap it down at least one point. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this in-service on the Mako robotic system. Special thank you to Lance, a surgical first assist, and Ashley, a Mako rep. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you like this kind of content, uh, just spread the word. Otherwise, thank you for joining us, and say goodbye to Lance.